kidding. Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Oscar-nominated film editor Yorgos Mavropsaridis. Uh, Yorgos, you're a longtime collaborator collaborator uh, with director Yorgos Lanthimos, and you've done it again this year with Poor Things. The reception uh, again is incredible. What makes this Yorgos and Yorgos team such a, such a success? Well, thank you for having me, first of all, and uh, for inviting me to to this. And uh, well, I guess all these years we have worked, we found a way to communicate without now needing to talk about anything. We started, as you said, almost 25 years ago, 1999, I think, was our first collaboration. We started working on commercials together. That was a way for us to to to, to get some, you know, support for our families working on commercials. But our main interest was films. I was uh, I'm quite older than him, about 20 years older. And, uh, you know, I was already... Uh, kind of successful editor in Greece. I had done a lot of mainstream films, you know, very successful in the, in, 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 the, in the box office and everything. And when I, you know, when I met Yorgos, I understood that uh, he, he's he's exceptional in a sense. He doesn't want to do what everybody else wanted to do. He, he Even when we did commercials, he tried to find, to find his own means of personal expression. And I appreciated that a lot. So that's uh, you know that that was what m- connected me with him you know this this uh, challenge to work with the uh, original artist one who who not only you know he didn't want to do a, a presentational film he wanted to, to uh, the film to have a life of its own and also to a, a different way of expressing his means he's a uh, He's a cinematic genius, according to me. He he he's uh, technically uh, well versed in all the aspects of filmmaking, from camera to editing, in, in theater as well. He was in, uh, he, he did a lot of uh, um, plays in the theater. His approach was very interesting from the beginning. It's not the usual, uh, let's say, Stanislavski way of uh, working with actors. It was mainly, basically, the movement, biomechanics, diff- different kind of ideas. So that's how movement plays a lot of um, it has a lot of importance in in his in his films, and also, I mean, I was interested in the way that. He just didn't want to satisfy the viewer with the same things. He wanted to, from the beginning, to place the viewer uh, to to see somehow himself in the mirror and experience uh, something new, something different, and question his way of being and and how, he, he, why he feels this way and why he thinks this way. From early things like the dog tooth, for example, and up to up to now, up to poor things. It's for me. It's the same. The same Lanthimos I see, of course, he's developed a lot. His means of expression he expanded enormously. But there's always a big existential question about his films. Like, for example, in um, in Doctooth, it was how, you know, how we learn about the world. But it's the same for me theme in Poor Things. It's about knowing. Bella Baxter knows the world in a new way. So he's always interested you know, in these things that also interest me as well. And I guess from his part, my devotion, let's say, my uh, long years of work in, to, to be able to, to understand his world somehow and be helpful to him in a positive way and not hinder him. Maybe that's the reason we have this happy marriage. Well, it certainly works. Um, and everyone I've spoken to about this film so far um, said it's it's one of the most ambitious projects that they've worked on. Uh, did you feel like it brought brought on any new challenges for you, or did, or did you feel that way? All, all all his films present a challenge to me, but not in that sense. It was not because it's uh, it was more expensive. Of course, it was more expensive, and the burden was maybe people think it's it was more because of that. But no, it was about the finding again the inner core of the film, finding the, the soul of this film again, finding not repeating ourselves in 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 the same you know like we did and 
to find, you know, because it's film he does, it's, it's a different challenge, but it's always a great challenge. You have to be 110% better than you were on a previous film. You have to devote yourself so fully, but he gives you the example because he's wholly devoted in what he does. And he always tries to, to ex, 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 extend his means of presenting it. He's very much interested in the form of how we say things. His language, as a matter of fact, his cinematic language, it's always important. And of course, that affects our editing as well. When you're editing, how do you how do you go about balancing sort of the the drama and the emotion with the the humor that it's really pushing the boundary? Especially, I I would say Mark Ruffalo's character he's he's almost absurd, but in in just the right way, like it, it it doesn't go too far. How do you make that believable and funny at the same time while sort of maintaining the tone of the film? I think it's a characteristic of, of Lanthimos, as a matter of fact, all, all this uh, this uh, presentation of a being being tragic, but at the same time funny. So he, his characters are always like that because life is like that. You can laugh at the most tragic moments, or you can you know you can feel uh, a, a burden of, of emotion even in the funniest moments because it, it, they're not so clear-cut emotions in his film. Of course, this has to be kept in, in, in as you say, in balance. You know, it's uh, his idea of the actors is like they work as models in a big uh, world, in like, you know, in, in the set. It's not about the the, 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 the the actors. It's not only about the characters. Characters exist in a society, in a world that makes them as they are. But that was also the, the most challenging thing for, for, for poor things and Bella Baxter, because we've never seen a character like Bella Baxter before. It's, you know, it's, it, she's an experiment and, and she admits also that she was an experiment in, in, in knowing the world in a different way that we are, because she doesn't have time to, to be influenced by all the prejudices of uh, father, of, of society, of uh, the school and everything. Her only relation is with, with God, God in Baxter. So she's more pure in her understanding and accepting or rejecting things. Was that one of the challenges as an editor to take the viewers along this ride with Bella, who's going from, she's maturing so much along the way. So you sort of have to make sure she's edited along the, the way properly to, to go from being very childlike to sort of blossoming into a young woman. Right, right. That was that was the biggest challenge, but also it's not to represent that, to make it you know, an experience for the audience, to make the audience or the viewer feel that he's watching world or he's experiencing sexuality in, in a new way, unhindered by all the prejudices of polite society, as it said in the movie. So to be on the on on her um, on her point of view all the time, from being a, a child or a baby to mature into to a to a self-conscious woman who you know, even when she marries in the end, she doesn't she doesn't do it with a romantic way of, you know, people are used to be presented and that. It's it's a it's a collaboration between two creative beings towards a purpose, to make humanity better. So she she has a different point of view and we had to we had to make sure that this point of view stays with the view all the time in the present of of the of you know of the presentation. When you have such a great cast like Emma Stone, Willem Dafoe, Mark Ruffalo, I, I mean, the, their performances are all stellar. How many takes are you getting of, of this? And how difficult is it then to, to to pick and choose the right pieces to pull together to, to tell this story? Well, it's true, but, but knowing Yorgos all these years, I know how he works with the actors. He he does, a, especially on this film, he did a lot of improvisations, but that's not, that was not the first time. Like, for example, the first film we did, uh, Kineta, there was on, the, the, the script was only 16 pages long, so there was a lot of improvisation from, from the actors. And from what I understand in this film as well, they had a lot of playfulness together to, to just be there 
not to try to be somebody, just be there as human beings, experiencing things. And that's always in the back of my mind when I watch it. Of course, in these films, there was a lot of improvisation because you have to understand it's not something like uh, Bella Baxter is, okay, this is how you do it. No, there was a lot of experimenting and we had to go through that in the edit. We had to, I had to experience all these improvisations. I had to, to edit all these different moments of here. In the end, of course, we had to, to make sure that only the substance, the, the important things remained, but the experience made us understand the character better and be able to, you know, us follow her during her phases, and also then because I'm a viewer, in, in I'm at the I'm the first viewer in, of the film, so I, I had to, you know, when I wake up and see the the film, I had to be persuaded. Okay, this is uh, this is how it happens, but of course it takes a lot of experimenting, it takes a lot of editing, it takes a lot of trial and error, but in the end, this is uh, the, the the fun and the excitement of, of the creative work with uh, some somebody working with somebody like Yorgos Lanthimos. To, to to find this thing in the edit because it's there of course it's there in all the takes but you're gonna have all the takes you have to eliminate things you have to take the 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 core of this inner world of the film how important is the first sequence to to a film in your mind because in this one in particular we, we see emma and at that point she's this mystery woman and she's in the, this sort of striking blue dress and she's standing over a bridge and we're, we don't know who she is. We're about to get the story. Um, and and it, that just draws the viewer right in. Yeah, I mean, I was captivated instantly. So how important is that first scene for you? And it, is that the f most, most important in the film or, or wh what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are that uh, on all our films, we try to establish something in the beginning, even in our previous films. What, it, what is it about? Of course, there were two, on this film, there were two beginnings, hypothetically. One was to start on the black and white with the title, or, or Bella playing in the piano. But there was also discussed, maybe we could start with the, you know, with the, the Victoria Blessington falling off the bridge. So... The material, that shot, as you mentioned, captivated me as well, just the back of it. So it, it does pose a question to the viewer. What is it about this woman? Why did she do that? And, you know, all, all these questions are staying with her because we are interested a lot in the in the experience of, of the viewer. What does he feel there? And is that answered? And, of course, it, it is answered when we see her from for the face later on in the in the when uh, Godwin Bax explains the situation to Max, so it creates a, a connection and makes the viewer in 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 a different way participate more in what is happening. You create curiosity, you create anticipation, you make him a collaborator in what he sees. Lanthimos doesn't like what we call you know when 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 he wants to, to tell me that this that it is bad he said this is descriptive descriptive this is representation we don't want representation we want the viewer to experience these these things in a different way and participate as well but not identifying with the characters like that but you know maybe being curious or try um, trying to as I said before, to have him experience the inner mechanics of the film somehow. Also, the uh, why why does Lanthimos want to do this, and what is it that he's saying about it? Okay, it's about knowing knowing the world, but in a new way. It's not about knowing the world as we know it with our prejudices and we are where we have been told, which is a theme also in Doctor. The father says these strange words to the children, so they learn the world through his eyes. No, this is something more uh, direct, direct experience of the world. And this we hope to, you know, with our style of editing, to make the, the viewer also experience this kind of newness. This, uh, you know, everything is new. Everything is, uh, I haven't seen that before. It's something new and it's a new experience. Everything she does. And, and new cities throughout. I mean, through through the various cities in Europe, how how does editing impact that and, and the style 
does that shift at all as you're going from from one set to another? I mean, these big, huge, beautiful sets. I mean, what a what a production design on, on this film. All right, it's incredible production design. Yeah, they were all uh, aesthetically thought before. Like, for example, the first part of Bella in God Baxter's house. It's in black and white that creates this gothic atmosphere. It, it you know, it's better to see. God with Baxter, you know, Frankenstein in black and white because he has references to to the gothic of that. And then it would be, of course, it would be great to have this uh, exuberance of colors, of, of you know, because she experiences the world for the first time. So it's not a black and white experience. It's you know, the first time we see her, apart from the intercuts we do, and apart from the first shot, which is a uh, color. The first time she goes to Lisbon, it's suddenly, you know, Bella Baxter discovers her sexuality, but also she discovers a new world. She experiences eating, uh, making love in, in, a, in, a, in a new way, in a new fantastic way. So this creates this uh, this difference in mood. And then, of course, when, when you go to the, um, to the cruiser, so she's more, uh, you know, she's studying, she understands what a cynic is, what stoicism means, she, she, she tries to understand how people behave, she has this uh, character who's played by Carmichael who is very pessimistic about humanity, so this is ectachrome, it's not, an, it's not the same color, we, he used ectachrome for the first time in these sequences, which was great, like he, he has um, more um, dark tones the film has more darker tones and, and everything and of course when you go then again to 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 paris in in the bordello it's a different it's a different color it's not like you know so bright as it was in lisbon she's becoming more mature and then in the end you reach london which is more normal a color like you know she, she became a woman uh, of course with her differences and uh, you know her way of being but uh, still it's although it's you know although we see the death of Godwin Baxter in that scene which is a bit more dark the, the feeling still there is um, a, 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 um, not a pessimism it's not so dark because even even Godwin Baxter when he, he dies he says oh this is interesting so everything is interesting for her even death is interesting in the end, she accepts what she is, and you know, in the end, the, the end scene, the colors again bright up. In in the last portion, when you know we see her ex-husband being a god and everything. So yes, all these aesthetic decisions were made beforehand. How do you know when to end a end a movie? I mean, what does it feel like to push? I don't know. Do you push a final button? Like what <laughs> is that relief, or then are you just full of anxiety? Like what is what is that moment like when you're like, all right, I'm not touching this ever again? Well, it's it it it. What we do is that we we try everything we can, so we know that we have tried everything we could do, right? So we said, okay, we've tried this, we've tried this, and then we combine this and we combine. In the end, the end is that yes, this is what it is because we've tried everything, and this is you feel that. I mean, I have edited films before that. They, they didn't end in, in, in inside of me. They didn't end in the sense that it could have been different, it could have been that, but in, in, in working with Latmos, he provides the time and the space for us to try all these things and be sure that we did everything we could for, for, for this. And this is a long experience, of course, but I'm grateful to him because he provides this fantastic environment. We are alone working. We don't get interference by, you know, studio or whatever. You know, we we still do our work as we used to do when we when he was younger, when he did his first film. You know, which we didn't have any obligation to our producers. But again, I feel we don't have obligations to our producers even now working in these big budget films. We have still the same home environment, and you know, we we feel free to try everything we can to to to, to do the film, find its own. Um, language for example its own uh, being the, the, the being and we he's very tender we are very tender creating this it's like a baby that he needs to be nourished and given the chances to 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 live on its own terms and this is when the end comes when it gets its own life and it's ready to go <laughs> well it's it's a fantastic uh collaboration between you and yorbos and um 
It led to Oscar nominations uh, for the favorite a few years ago. Um, and I, I'm crossing my fingers that it, it only leads to more for poor things. I love this movie so much. So congratulations on the film and thanks for chatting with Gold Derby today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you for the conversation as well.